Hey, so I'm here with... Jeff Atwood. So Jeff, uh, how do people know you? Well, they know me mostly through my blog, Coding Horror, and also through StackOverflow.com, which I started with uh, Joel Spolsky about two years ago. Now, how popular is Coding Horror? Uh, Coding Horror is kind of stabilized at around, I usually just look at the RSS feed numbers that I get out of the feed burner, which is owned by Google. Uh, it's about 120K, so I don't know, some, some variant of that. But among de developers, it's the go-to site, would you say? Uh, I don't know if it's the go-to site. Hopefully it's useful to developers. I will say that. I do strive very hard to be useful and relevant to the people reading the blog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, Hanselman, uh, Phil Hack, it's probably some, one of the top sites along with Scott Pugh. Thank you. Now, Hopefully. what's it like? Because you get a lot of love. I mean, you cover a lot of topics from technology, hardware, to right. the, the wallet. Could you show the wallet, by the way? Oh, the wallet. I, di <laughs> I didn't talk about the wallet, did I? So this is a... Uh, I did blog about this wallet, so if you're interested, this is the wallet that looks like... Uh, Printer paper with the, the dot matrix printing. <laughs> this What's, was used as a prop in my talk. That's what he's referring that's to. That's what I remember too. Yeah. And it's made out of the uh, the, the Tyvek. Tyvek. Yep. That's right. Yep. It's very thin, which is I don't want to have the Costanza wallet, right? Where you're just like this big thing in your butt. Yeah. So, no, yeah. but but this this type of stuff connects with guys, you know, yeah, or I should say developers, you know, guys and girls, about just the geekiness of it, right? Yeah. Well, it's very holistic. I think you know, being a geek, being a programmer is like it's kind of a lifestyle, right? It's like it's cool. It's like you're just learning all the time about a bunch of different stuff, and there's there's no reason to be ashamed about a learning. That's crazy. And, if, and actually, taking this one step further, so coding horror is one way to learn. I learn by writing there. Hopefully, other people learn from what I've written there. Uh, and there's some entertainment aspect to it as well. It's learning, edutainment, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Stack Overflow is also all about learning. I mean, what audience, if you look at what makes a good developer, it's really the best developers are always learning, you know, very aggressively learning. And that's sort of the hallmark of a great developer. And that's what Stack Overflow is kind of trying to trick you into doing, is not so much of the discussion back and forth, like which is better, Java or you know, .NET, but like, hey, what can I learn today that's interesting? And what can I share? And how can I teach others? Because teaching is a great way to learn. Like that talk I just gave, I learned a ton from just presenting, right? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of win-win. You know, the teachers get something, the, the people learning get something, and then you're sort of making the world a little bit better. You're increasing the amount of knowledge in the world. Um, and that's, that's always been the goal. And I think developers get that. That's why I love being a programmer. I love other software developers is I think they're, they're a kick-ass audience. So even though we're trying to branch out beyond programmers, I love having that as our core because to me, you know, obviously I'm biased being a software developer, but I think it's, it's a very, very talented audience of smart people who know how to learn. So. Now, what, are you comfortable now? Because there's a certain amount of fame that you have. Obviously. Well, I wouldn't say fame. There's, there's internet fame. That's not yes. the same as like real world fame. But I will say that when I went to Webstock earlier this year, which is in New Zealand, uh, somebody on the street recognized me. And my wife was with me, and she was very, very impressed. That's the first time that's ever happened. So, so, so it is kind of cool to get, you know, acknowledge that, hey, you know, I know who you are, and I've, you know, I like your stuff. And I mean, who, what person doesn't like that? Uh, it's not necessarily the goal, um, but sure, it's fun. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you handle it very well. So, yeah, thank you. Um, now, this other venture you've started with Joel, uh, Stack Overflow. Right. How is that going? Oh, brilliantly. I mean, what we're doing is Stack Overflow is doing so well, it's like a blockbuster. It's sort of taking over its its niche on the internet, uh, which is always sort of the goal, is like replace some of the not so great content on the internet with like better content that we build together as, as, a, as a community. Um, so that part's great. Um, growth does have its downside, surprisingly. Like there we have big city problems in Stack Overflow now, like uh, that are somewhat harder to deal with when <laughs> we're a small site. Uh, but it's fun. I mean, who wants to? It's like complaining. It's like I'm too rich. I'm too famous. How terrible for me, right? Uh, so I apologize for saying that. Uh, the other thing we're trying to do is branch out. Okay, if you like Stack Overflow, what if there was a Stack Overflow about cooking? What if there was a Stack Overflow about system administration? Um, what if there was a Stack Overflow about user interface design? Um, there's a process for this at area51.stackexchange.com. If you go to stackexchange.com, you can sort of see the democratic process at which we launch these sites, how the community grows them. It's, it's, we're trying to turn it into sort of this, this, this process by which the community can actually build their own sites um, together. Where, and it's all Creative Commons. Uh, you know, we don't own it per se. Uh, we're giving content back to the entire internet. Um, but we're trying to curate it. We're trying to help guide it, you know, from from the top as well. What what made it so successful? I mean, in your opinion, was it the UI? Was it the community building? I think it's just that we really executed well. I think we had a good idea. Um, there was a there's a need for like, well, the the what, as Joel calls it, the hyphenated site. So expert, we had a clear enemy that that was very much disliked in the community, <laughs> and people were like, yes, we'll take down the bad guy. Yeah. So uh, it was. The clear, defined sort of enemy, if you will. They're not really our enemies. I want to be clear about that. This yeah. is just a dramatic thing like wrestling, right? Like, right? Um, 
good idea, clear enemy, and really good execution. That's my team. That's where I take all the credit for. <laughs> and but Joel as well. I mean, we thought about this stuff a lot. Like Joel had his communities for a long time. Mm -hmm. I had my blog, which I knew how comments worked intimately, and I had I've been around the block many many times on like internet community, right? Um, so I think we were well positioned to, to sort of do everything right uh, and sort of put it together in a package that, that made sense and sort of where we took the best ideas from these other systems and sort of combined them in a way that hadn't really been seen before. Nothing in it is like dramatically unique, mm -hmm. but the way that they are combined, combined in tandem with the good execution, I think is what makes it work. And then a lot of people claim that, and there's some truth to this, when you start with a big audience, like Joel and I had a big audience of within this, this community, uh, certainly that doesn't hurt, right? right. I'm not going to argue that if we were nobodies, it would have turned out exactly <laughs> the same way, but I like to think that they're there because it's good. They're not there because Joel said this is good or Jeff said this is good. In fact, one of my greatest Stack Overflow moments was Joel and I were on a trip. I don't remember where we were. We're some airport. Some guy's like, hey, Stack Overflow, because we were wearing Stack Overflow shirts and stuff. And he's like, he's, and Joel's like, hey, obviously expecting him to recognize, you're Joel Spolsky. And he's like, he had no idea who Joel was. He had no idea who I was. And I was like, that's awesome. Because it's not about Joel, it's not about me, it's yes. about the site being useful to people on the internet, right? right? It doesn't ultimately matter who we are. What matters is that the site works, it's producing, you know, content that's useful to people and helping them, you know, in, in their life, right, in some small way. We're making our little corner of the internet better. I mean, to me, that's very, very satisfying. That's the only goal that we have. You know, I, I spoke with a friend once, and I, I think we can't discount the fact how good both you and Joel are at building communities, because there's a psychology even behind, let's say, question asking, you don't want people to ask bad questions. There's but. a lot of subtlety to the Q&A. So one thing we learned about Q&A was that when I, when I started this project, I was like, oh, Q&A, interesting. I hadn't really thought of it. Joel had this sort of the kernel of the idea for sure. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm going to go do a ton of research. And I looked at all these Q&A sites, and there's huge Q&A sites in there that I had never heard of, like AnswerBag, Answers.com. I don't go to these sites, right? I, hadn't, I might have gotten search results occasionally, but I was like, what is, what is this, right? Um, it's this huge ecosystem on the Internet of, of Q&A. And I think just looking at it, um, Joel and I had some what I thought were fairly obvious uh, ways to like, wow, this could not, this could be better. This could be a lot better, right? Um, it's not that hard. Like, I mean, the exercise to play is like, do a Google search for something you really need, click on the result that, that works for you, and think, how could I make this page better? What could I do? And a lot of times the answer is really simple. Wow, the formatting's not very good. Wow, there's way too many ads, like just stupid numbers of ads. Like, it takes forever to load. If you can be faster, have a just cleaner design, and have an you know, easier to read layout where the code is actually formatted like code, you will win. It's not like <laughs> rocket science, right? right. It, it's pretty easy to, to play this game and then, and then think about, well, how can we make this fun? How can we make this engaging and interesting for the people participating so they're actually you know, wanting to, 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 to assist and leave these breadcrumb trails? To me, it's all about just sort of breadcrumb trails. You just do stuff normally on the internet, mm -hmm. hopefully, and it's not really that much work, but you're leading a trail for other people to follow that's actually useful and not making things worse, it's making things better. You know, the whole, so the reputation thing, and I, and I know you still love questions about that from the Arista <laughs> talk. And you still reputation get is a very double-edged sword. <laughs> because when, anytime you put an incentive in front of people, um, sometimes that becomes the goal. You know, that's mm -hmm. always, the, and then this is also talked about with regards to compensation, you know. All of a sudden, it's not about the job, it's about the paycheck. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think reputation has that downside. You have to think about, is it about the rep? Or is it about, you know, it feels good to learn. You know, it feels good to teach other people, and it feels good. I mean, think about it from a selfish perspective. Okay, what don't you want as a developer? You don't want to come in and just clean up really bad code written by somebody who just really didn't know what they were doing. So if you are occasionally saying, hey, you know, let me help you understand this in a way that's public on the Internet, over time, your craft gets better because there's less bad programmers. Right. Less bad programmers just means more awesome work for you and less drudgery. Wow, now i got to be the janitor and clean up after this guy who had no idea what he was doing. Yeah. So if you make the Internet better for those kind of people, it's like, wow, maybe I shouldn't, you know, construct SQL strings just by putting plus, 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 right? right? Maybe I should think, wow, what if somebody put, like, you know, Bobby Tables in there, right? Then you're winning. You're, you're actually helping make the, the whole craft of programming a little bit better. Um, and I, I guess maybe that's the aspirational message that Joel and I are, but we believe in this stuff, right? Like, we wouldn't do this if we didn't believe it. That's not just me saying it. It's me because I do it. I try to do it, too. I'm on, I don't, I, I, granted, I have, I'm very busy. <laughs> but on our sites, I participate. You'll see me yep. ask questions that I think make the Internet better. Help me and help everyone else. I'm doing it right alongside you. I'm not asking anyone to do anything I wouldn't do myself. Hey, you took a time out of your Saturday to uh, come to a code camp. So. Oh, absolutely. And I got to learn about, you know, I, we're already doing this, but I got to really study it and learn it. And then I do think people should know about this. This is a really interesting technique, I think. So, sure. Same principle.
Now, what did you present on today? Uh, so I presented on an aspect of HTML5, a very narrow aspect called uh, local storage. And there's also a little bit of messaging that goes with that. There's a message queue post message. Um, and the problem we were trying to solve on our sites was the problem of identities across multiple websites. Uh, and HTML5 turns out to be sort of our savior in there in that you, the, the local storage is much more flexible than third-party cookies. Third-party cookies are very limited. They're getting locked down. They just don't work that well. And HTML5 local storage works brilliantly as long as it's a reasonably modern browser. The only real hole is IE7, as I pointed out in the presentation. Mm -hmm. But the uh, dive into HTML5.org, I think, is the, 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 but the excellent page. I urge everybody viewing this to read it because it's really interesting and good documentation. Now, let, let, if we can back up a little bit, you know, you started with an interesting problem that you saw in Safari. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, that is interesting. So, when we originally started setting this up, we're like, okay, we'll use cookies. We'll just, you know, the cookies will be third-party cookies, a well-understood thing. Uh, and we're like, wow, this is working. This is, you know, this is going to work. We're going to do this. It's going to work. And then we tested it in Safari. <laughs> and we're like, wow, this totally doesn't work. We're screwed. You know, this doesn't work in Safari, like, even a little. And we were like, wow, why doesn't this work? Because it works in Firefox. It works in IE with a special header, which is silly, but whatever. It's IE. Uh, it works in Chrome. We're like, okay, that's pretty much what we need to, to move forward. Uh, but then Safari was like a total, like, uh, showstopper. So we dug and dug and dug and finally found out that Apple has decided third-party cookies will only be stored uh, say you have an iframe on the page, typically these, like say it's an ad, they try to drop cookies. Mm -hmm. On most browsers this works. But on Safari, the only way that will work is if the user clicks on the frame. Apple has made the explicit decision that until the user clicks on that frame, they will, the user doesn't want your cookie. Why Which is, is that? Well, I believe it's because, and I think there's a strong case to be made for this, that Apple really wants to undermine online advertising completely, like with blocking Flash. And I don't disagree because I think that type of advertising is irresponsible anyway. Like we don't do Flash ads on Stack Overflow. Right. We only do static, non-moving images, which I think is the way it should be. Mm -hmm. um, now, advertisers don't like to hear this, but I would rather leave money on the table and just have a what I call responsible advertising. So I think Apple's really putting their foot down and saying, you know what, the web shouldn't really suck like this and we're not going to let you drop cookies <laughs> uh, like every other browser does. So. And so because you're trying to allow a good user experience, so if somebody's on Stack Overflow or Server Fault, they can easily be logged in. Right? That's right. They can, they can they, they log into Stack Overflow, and then assuming they have an account on Super User or Server Fault or one of our other sites, they would automatically be logged in uh, through the, the HTML5 local storage holding their network ticket. So why doesn't, HTML, why doesn't that local storage have that issue? Is it, you know, I mean, so if you could explain as a little bit about local storage. As far as I can tell, the only reason it doesn't have that issue is that nobody knows about it yet. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm not kidding. Because uh, all the privacy controls around third-party cookies just simply don't exist um, in local storage at all, as far as I can tell. I might be wrong about this. Like, I, I, From what I could tell, though, it seemed pretty wide open. Um, so there is there is possibility for abuse. I think for what we're doing is uh, I don't think an abuse at all. It's it's just us trying to solve a problem for the our community mm -hmm. of, you know, I have 10 different accounts, and I don't like logging into 10 different websites. You know, automatically log me in when you see me. It's a completely reasonable request. But you could certainly see people using this to store. I mean, actually, to be honest with you, and I hate to talk about this because I, I think it causes people to freak out a little bit, but you could use local storage to reinstantiate cookies. Oh, that got deleted. Okay. Like you could lay down, right? You could lay down a, a, a GUID on the user, and then every time they come in, it's like if you see that GUID, you could put the cookie back. Oh. In fact, I remember when I was doing research, I found that scenario. I was like, ooh, that's really slimy, right? Yes. So the, the potential for evil here is, is high. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen, but the other thing is weird is like, okay, you can go and view your cookies in a browser. Pretty much most technical people know how to do that. How do you view local storage? Even in Chrome, going to the dev tools, you have to do that little trick I showed you where you, you invoke local storage and then it's visible. So I think it just needs to mature. Um, but cookies as a mechanism really do kind of suck. So I wouldn't be sad to see cookies sort of die down a little bit. <laughs> uh, we do need a replacement, like a more flexible replacement for cookies. So there, there's some goodness in there. I don't know where it's going. I think it's just very, very early, frankly. But again, I got to urge people go, you know, dive into HTML5. Mm -hmm. Uh, read the section on local sources. Fascinating reading. Yeah, it's a great site. We'll put up the URL.org or something like that, right? Yeah. I mean, 